For the last two weeks, I have eaten essentially nothing but meat, meat and butter and coffee. So how did this start? So I guess it was three weeks ago, my dad uh, sent me a text and uh, said, hey, you gotta go check out Joe Rogan's podcast uh, about this carnivore diet thing. He'd been trying it and he was t telling me about the, the energy that he was having. He was telling me about the, uh, the weight loss that he was enjoying. It was all these positive things. And I, I was a little skeptical at first because I, I mean, in, in a perfect world, you know, that would be the old, my ultimate diet, you know, to be able to eat, eat nothing but meat and steak. <laughs> All, all the time, uh, but uh, you know. So I, I thought, oh yeah, that's that's got to be too good to be true. But I did. I went and I watched the podcast, and it was very compelling. And what was more compelling was than that than than Jordan's uh, version of that was his daughter came on, and she was suffering from all sorts of terrible food allergies and all sorts of problems, and went to a direct uh, to a strict carnivore diet and changed her life. You can go watch those if you want. They're really interesting. So. I started digging around a little bit and thinking, you know, this is very interesting. And, and I, I mean, I know the evidence is anecdotal from, you know, there's not a lot of science behind it, uh, but I've always felt that way personally, that there was just nothing that satisfied me, uh, like that, that, that satiated me like, um, like a meat, especially beef and, and, and steak. I mean, I've tried vegan diets and vegetarian diets and I, mean, I just had a horrible time hate vegetables, hate the food, dread every meal. So having something like this uh, was very appealing to me. So I thought, well, what, what, what's the harm? You know, what, what can go wrong if I try it for a couple weeks? And so I did that. And so here's, what, here's my experience. So what I did, what, I was, what I've been eating is I've been, uh, we, we get up early, you know, around five o'clock, 5.30 or so, and we have the Bulletproof coffee, which is uh, a strong coffee. I make it in the blender. Uh, and I make 28 ounces, and half for Mrs. W and half for me. So that's 14 ounces per. We have these great big, big cups that we have. So in that coffee, and in good high quality coffee, uh, I put, um, I started with half a cube of butter, and I'm pretty much almost up to a full cube of butter. <laughs> I know, I know, and that MC, MC something, coconut oil, I put that in there too, it's flavorless and tasteless. So what you get is you blend this up and you put the butter in there and you percolate the coffee into the, into the deal, you get this super rich, buttery, it's just delicious, it's absolutely delicious. I can't hardly go back to lattes or any other coffee after this. So I have that, and what I like about that is that there's so much fat in it, good butter fat, organic butter, uh, that it, it carries you through the day. You don't, you don't feel like you need breakfast. You have that fat and you have that energy. And then whenever I feel like it, um, I get my grub on with, with some steak. Uh, and I'm talking a lot of steak because I'm only eating once a day, about once, or once every 20, 22 hours or so. And so what I've done is, is uh, we went to Costco and, and I bought steaks that have a lot of fat in them. Like uh, what I've found to be my favorite have been ribeyes and um and new york t-bones ribeyes and t-bones because i eat all the fat now i eat the whole thing i don't eat the bone but i eat all that stuff um i don't i've been kind of staying away from the leaner cuts and so i'll i'll grub on that i mean i'm, I'm not i'm talking 30 ounces 40 ounces of steak steak if they're little ones i'll cook three of them uh if they're bigger ones i'll eat two and that's it um i'm i'm good i i'm satisfied i had a delicious meal um i don't uh, I'm not hungry at night, um, and then I'm having the benefit of the intermittent fasting. If you want to find, just see something that's fascinating, go in and start studying uh, what happens with fasting and what fasting does, what they're finding fasting does to cancer cells. And I mean, it's a whole nother thing. I'm not an expert on it, but it's interesting. So, so that's what I do. And the the nice thing about it is that um, I, you don't I don't have those uh, those you know, where you're super hungry, like in the middle of the day where you feel like you need a snack or you need a chips or candy or something like that, that roller coaster ride, you know, you get from doing that. So I have that, eat, I mean, you eat as much as you want. You eat a whole roast if you want to. It doesn't make any difference. I have that meal um, and then fasting all the way until the next morning when I have my coffee. So I try to have a keep a window of that from the time I have that coffee to, to the steak, whatever that is, no more than eight hours. Six hours is even better, and then it, it'll carry you through, man. I mean, you're just, it's great. So how does it feel, um, and, and what's, what's the difference? So what I have noticed is stripping everything away, no sugar, no, no carbohydrates, none of, none of those things, what I've found uh, is a very even keel, a very um, sharp, sharp in the brain, sharp, sharp mind, clearness of thought, um, no hunger, um, no, uh, no uh, cravings, um, no digestive problems, just very, a very even keeled, I guess is, is a good way to put it. 
Uh, what I uh, also found is by stripping out the carb, I think for me, the carbohydrates, the pastas and the breads and all those things, that's where the weight comes from. That's where the, all of the brain fog for me comes from. It really affects me. I mean, I love it. Who doesn't like to have a, a, a pasta or bread? I mean, I, I grew up with bread with every meal. It's, it was kind of hard to give that up. But what I'm finding now is after two weeks, I don't really miss it. So I was, uh, my other thing that I was worried about was scurvy. You know, it's like, well, if you don't have any fruits or vegetables, because I read a lot about the old guys, you know, when they were on the sailing ships and they didn't have access to fre fresh fruits and vegetables. Uh, what I found, uh, what a lot of people are believing that is if you strip the carbohydra carbohydrates out, um, then you don't have near the requirement for vitamin C. So what's interesting is there's a guy, Dr. Sean Baker. He's a, uh, he's a hard, he's kind of the leading guy of this carnivore diet. Um, and he's got a whole bunch of video, YouTube videos and he's been doing this, I think for over two years and has been documenting this, you know, very scientifically and, and, and kind of initiating some studies and all that. What they're finding is that people that are doing this are not getting scurvy and they're not suffering from, uh, from any of these maladies that everyone would tell us that you would be, um, and just the opposite. So it's, it's quite an interesting thing. So will I continue to do this? No, I don't think so, because I'm getting a little bit bored with it. I mean, I love steak as much as anyone does, uh, but um, it, it would be, I do crave uh, some fruits and some, a little bit of different variety. So I think what I'm going to do is, is starting today, is I'm going to introduce um, fruits and vegetables, uh, and I'm gonna stay away from the carbohydrates. I think that that is the, I think that's the big problem. Um, I think that that's what really causes the issues. Two other benefits I don't wanna neglect was, of course, weight loss. Uh, so from doing this for two weeks, so I went from 200, well, I had some, let's, I'm down to 190, we'll just say that. I'm down to 190 where I wanted to be, um, of, and very lean, um, and, and very, feel very strong. Uh, the nice thing about it is all of the areas on me that was, you know, that just fat, like on the sides, you know, kind of the love handles and, and up in the chest area and, and you know, just kind of squishy and the, and the flabby stuff is gone, um, being replaced by, by muscle. So what I'm finding is that I'm, my weight is starting to creep up, but all of that fat is just going away because I'm just not ingesting it. Um, so it's burning off of my body and what's being brought back, you know, I'm gaining, you know, like maybe a pound, pound and a half a week or so, but it's coming back with muscle. Um, and my energy level is, is really good. And it's, it's, it's just fascinating. It's absolutely fascinating. I know this is a very controversial subject. I mean, even more controversial than veganism, vegetarianism. I mean, it seems like everyone is pretty much opposed to this. We've been, but you gotta, you gotta think about it. You gotta think about, um, where is this information that I have gotten uh, in my brain about what is nutritious and what is a good diet. Where did it come from? Is it the food pyramid that was set up, you know, 80, 100 years ago? Uh, is it um, a ve vegetarian or veganism propaganda or a dogma? Is it what my parents told me or whatever? Sometimes you got to look at, at yourself it's like, and, and look at it really objectively. Well, what, what makes me feel good? Um, what, what, what is helping me out um, and what is um, taking away from my quality of life. So I don't care. And you can comment all you want. I don't care about your veganism. I don't care about your vegetarianism. I don't care what you think I should be or should not be eating. Um, again, it's this experiment. It's a short-term deal. And I think what's interesting about it is if you are, if you're just that guy that's have a hard time losing weight and just continuing you to know, put those pounds on, what do you got to lose to try it? You like steak, right? So try it for a couple weeks. I mean, can you do it for, for four weeks? Can you do it for a month? Yeah, of course you can. You know, make preparations. It's easy to do. Um, when you go out, there's not hardly any place in this country anywhere that you can't order steak. Um, yeah, you're gonna become a bit of a pariah with your friends. You know, anytime you have any strange food, food deals, you know, no one wants to invite you over because <laughs> Makes, that makes everyone uncomfortable. So you might just say, you know what? Uh, today I'm fasting today, so I'm happy to come over and and and, and enjoy in the in the company. And maybe you're not eating, so it's easy to eat on the on the road. Uh, if you're a trucker or something, you can uh, make your own beef jerky. I'm going to start doing that. I'll do a video on that here pretty soon. Um, you can make your own beef jerky. Just because you buy it in the store doesn't mean it's good. Look at the ingredients. You'll see that corn syrup is number one, number two, or number three. You know, stay away from that stuff and all the artificial flavors. I and mean, you can make your own. Um, so you can do that so you can make it ahead of time, you can make it in bulk, you can take it with you so it's easy. Jack and I went dirt biking the other day and took our beef, took my beef jerky with me and uh, uh, it, it was great. So yeah, so I know you have opinions, I know you think what's, you know what's best, um, maybe you do, maybe you don't, but uh, I'll guarantee you in the comments everyone's going to be at loggerheads and everybody's going to think that they're right and not necessarily. So you know your own body and you know what to, 
what you should do. So the point that I'm making is, I'll close with this, is try it for two or three or four weeks. And then um, if, you're, if you're feeling good, if you're seeing positive benefits then, maybe start introducing different things. You know, maybe start bringing in potatoes or Brussels sprouts or whatever these things that you like um, to make your diet a little bit more varied. Because it is, it is a little tedious after two weeks. Uh, when I was Sean Baker, uh, when I was watching his videos that he's had nothing but meat for two years, I thought, ooh, that'd be, that's, I mean, I love a good steak, but that's, uh, that's pretty hardcore. I don't know if I'm willing to go that far, but, but you could start introducing things in and find out what works for you. But the thing that's most appealing to me is, is to, be, to be not hungry and to enjoy what I'm eating and to have to eat once a day. That, that to me is a huge thing. And when I'm really doing a lot of research and studying on this fasting and the benefits of fasting, and the more I see it, the way it ties into eating one meal a day is really great. We don't need three meals a day. Uh, it's just not, unless you're some sort of a elite athlete or doing just crazy, ridiculous physical work, you know, then there's a calorie intake. But for just common people, um, especially if you're working in the office or you have a job at sitting, you just don't need it. You start training yourself and you eat, get that big protein load in uh, and you, you just, you don't need it. It's, it's interesting. I even put, I even put a, a half a cube of butter on my steaks. <laughs> it's, it's swimming in it. It's swimming in it, but it's delicious. It's delicious. So more to come on this. Um, I'll uh, give you updates on that. And uh, Brian and I, we got to get back to our, our firewood. I get anxious. I like to have my firewood brought in. Uh, we have firewood brought in for probably five or six years, but we want to stay ahead of that, right? All right. Thanks for watching and uh, leave your comments below. Thanks for watching. Click the thumbs up and we'll see you guys on the next video.